Did you know that was me when I was three years old? Hi, I'm Heinovich. Everybody might know me as one of the 20 global finalists of Google Science Fair, and being one of them was one of my accomplishments. But people might wonder, what's the story to the success? I was not a scientist since I was born, but I was raised up like a normal kid. I was singing, I was playing guitar, and I was expressing myself through music happily. Then I started asking why. When I went out with my mom or my dad, I would always ask why about things around me. Usually when mom bought me toys or texts and stuff, I would always wonder, how does it work? And why it did what it did? But not until I was seven, I started to, my parents started to inherit me with science and technology. Without me knowing it, they also inherit me to be a creative maker and also a scientist. Well, before succeeding to be a young innovator, an inventor, the first thing that I have is passion. Where did my passion come from? It came straight from my heart. At that time, I was, I was nine years old, and my dad bought me a Lego Mindstorm set, which then he challenged me if I can do one invention out of it. And then after that, my creativity just sparks out. And we even did a sketch of it first. And as you can see, up here is a messy sketch of me, is, is a messy sketch that, I've, that I did when I was 10 years old. But then a day later, I then came up with a prototype called the Unblinder. So what is the Unblinder? The Unblinder is a device which detects obstacles in front, in front of sight-disabled people and send a knocking signal back to them. I showed this to my dad, and then my dad was very, very impressive with it, but not until the new project came up. As passion goes on, it was the time that I rediscovered the bone conduction phenomenon. At that time, I was 11 years old, and I was playing my unplugged electric guitar, and my mom was loudly watching movies. But I then accidentally put my chin on the body of the guitar, and the sound got louder. Then I've asked myself one question that, can I use this phenomenon to help hearing impaired people? And then I got so excited, I even ran to my mom and dad and told them how cool the phenomenon is. And then we tried out, and it was wonderful. Well, before, and then with my passion, after discovering it, I had a passion. A passion which wants hearing impaired people to be able to listen to music, like how I sang to everybody else. A passion that wants hearing impaired people to be able to listen to the sound of their loved ones and a passion which wants to make the world a better place. With the help of my dad, I then we then started to create my, our first bone conduction prototype called Ears. It wasn't actually easy at all because at first we knew very, very little about electronics. And then when we went to electronic stores and when we bought stuff, and then we connected together and tested out, it didn't work. At that time, I was so angry about it, and I was very frustrated about it. But like, why didn't it work? But then my mom and dad, they walked up to me, and they encouraged me not to give up. And they told me that you need to move on with your project. Then we find more electronic parts, and the mix, even, we even mix them together with my mom's headband or my mom's contact lens caps. And then when we mixed it together, and then we tested it, the results came out that it worked. And this is my first ears prototype. We then later on decided to do a pretest at the School of the Deaf in Chiang Mai. And as you can see in this video, Cruvel, the volunteer, who has a profound hearing loss, can repeat after the teacher accurately without reading her lips. Oh. Oh. Mm. Every single word that she spoke out, every single word that, she, that came out of her mouth, it motivated me. 
and it almost made me cry with joy. And when it motivated me, it motivated me more on wanting to actually develop my hearing aid device, my ears device, so that we can improve the hearing disabled people's quality of life. However, there are times that my passion got discouraging. At that time, I was 12 years old. And then we decided to go to get some funding because we wanted to develop the first year's prototype. But then, the age, the limited, they, they limit the age applicant at 19 years old, and I was, I was only 12 years old. So then I teamed up with my mom, and I teamed up with my dad, and then used my dad as a team leader, but, my, but used my name as the creator and the inventor of ears. Well, we started pitching on the first round, and it actually went pretty well. I, I even got a fast track to the final round because some of the judges see potential in me. But then in the final round, the judges commented that, one, ears will need to be a medical device, which takes up to three years of process. And the second point that they commented is that ears will need, to need first dollar in six months. And then the results came out. I did not get the fund. At that time, I was almost completely shut down. And I was actually lying on the bed, and I was doing nothing. And I was crying, and I didn't even want to continue. But then my mom, but then my mom just walked up to me, and then she said, hey, Hub, you can't just fall down because of one single rock. Can you remember Google Science Fair? What that time. I then decided to submit my project to Google Science Fair. And I would like to show everybody in the, in the world that if I, can't prove any, if I can't prove myself to anybody here, I would like to prove myself to the world, that the world hears my voice. Well, well, all of the, and, and then after that, we went back to do some testing, and then we conducted more tests at the School of the Deaf in Chiang Mai. And then I realized that many of the volunteers had a low vocal power. And through my own singing training, I knew of a technique called the diaphragm method, which can enhance vocal power. I then came up with this software called Easy Speak, which allows people to learn how to enhance their vocal power through the diaphragm method. Well, and then I also realized that my project all combined together is art, science, and technology. And when combined together, it made me feel like my project is very unique. And that is why I really want to submit my project to Google Science Fair even more. However, all of these seems to be easy and always easy to accomplish. But it was actually a very harsh road. First of all, during the proposal creation, I didn't even know what a hypothesis is. And I need to cr even create my own questionnaire. And then I tested ears, I failed. I tested it, I failed again. And then I created another questionnaire, tested it, and the questionnaire didn't work out. And then I failed again. So at that time, I was down. I was doing nothing. I was shut down. But then, how did I overcome these obstructions? It was, it was because of my parents. First of all, my dad taught me first what is hypothesis, and he taught me from scratch. And then he further taught me how to process data. And then he even taught me how to collect data. But then the main thing is that my project has two hypotheses, one for ears and one for easy speak. And at that time, I was down again. But then my parents, my mom, she just walked up to me. And then she said to me that, hey, it's OK if you only have two hypotheses. I know and I taught you to be a risk taker. 
So just write down in your proposal that there were two discoveries. If they think that your project can change the world, they will accept you. But if they don't, they will just not. Take risk in a good way. So at that time, I bounced back again. And I was shining again. And I became brave again. And I was passionate again. And that is how I overcame the obstructions. I then, I then finalized my pro proposal and then submitted my project to Google Science Fair. And then the results came out that I got into the 20 global finalists of Google Science Fair. And then when I went to the Google headquarters, it was a completely new environment. And the environment was very impressive. First of all, when I went there, the judges, the employees, they respected kids. They respected teens. They see every children's and teens' ideas as the future of tomorrow. And second of all, is that the employees, when I got there, they just told me that, hey, congratulations, you're already the winner. And then I was, I was actually curious at that time. And then, and then the employee just further told me that, because you're here, use your time. And because if you're here, you are going to show to the world how cool your project is and how your project can change the world to the judges and to the whole world. And that was very impressive. And then the third thing is that my friends, my friends there and the judges, they're all friendly. And one of my friends, no, everybody, almost everybody in there even told me that Hub, Hub the youngest. And they would call me like, hey, Hub, come here. Oh my gosh, you're the youngest. And I was very, very impressive with that. But then something very emotional happened. At that time, it was the public ex exhibition day. And there was a girl. She just walked up to me. And then she just, we, we just discussed about her, my project. But then came the award ceremony day. And the results came out that I didn't get the prize. And then she just walked to me. And then she said to me that, Hi, Hub. I'm a hearing impaired person. I would like to tell you that you did very well on your project. And please don't give up. There are a lot more hearing impaired people out there waiting in need of your help. Please continue on what you're doing because I know that your project can change the world. And with that speech, with that word, the word that came out of her mouth, it that made me realize that that is the most wonderful experience I've ever gained in my life. However, we still have more work to do. We still, we still need to develop the easy speak and the ears for the better future of hearing impaired people. And funding will still be needed. So out of all of these things that I've gained in my life, it is all linked together. So therefore, never cut off children's or teens' valuable opportunities. Because if you do that, it is just like putting a box, covering up their heads, and chopping off their arms, and only letting them think of what's inside the box and not outside the box, and just push them to the ground. And also, respect children, respect teens, in terms of listening, in terms of guiding, in terms of freedom of choice, in terms of careness. You know, sometimes I tend to give up because of hate speeches. 
I was compared to a political figure. I, was even, I, I even got racist comments that I will never accomplish in my life. Well, then my mom let me play a game. And in that game, there'll be a card. And the cards will be in contrast. It'll be between good behavior, it'll be between good behavior and bad behavior. And then we will match it in contrast. And then after that, we will, and, and then after that the player will choose which behavior they want to be, they want to have in their life. Well, then after playing that game, there's going to be a small envelope. And when you open it up, it will say, be self-disciplined. So therefore, the world has two sides, the good side and the bad side. So sometimes, if the bad side comes into your life, just acknowledge it. Acknowledge it and let it go. And there are, there are also people, um, there are also people out there who heard my voice. And those people, they supported me mentally and financially. And we have the same goal, which is to make the world a better place. And I would like to thank, thank people who supported me for that. Thank you so much. So if you're not prepared to be wrong, you will never come up with anything original. Because when you get older, you may become frightened of being wrong. And the last thing that I want to say to everybody is that ideas are not for dreaming. It's for doing. So if you have any idea that seems to be impossible, it will be possible. If you have any idea that is stuck in your mind, just go with it. And someday, passion will leave Passion will leave you, will bring you to the success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.